Thank you. 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 I'll step out of the light. Don't, don't Come on in. I was opening it up to uh, questions from you, from you guys, but uh, just to start off, why don't we go with, uh, you know, why did you do a documentary like this? And tell us a little bit about bringing it all together and bringing the people in with you. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> let's see, about four years ago now, I guess, uh, I was working on set as an actor, and we, um, and of course, there was, there was an old dude ca cast, and they were looking at porn on the internet. And one of the guys said, "Oh my God, how do you do that and do anything else with the rest of your life? Oh my God, that's disgusting." And I, I, I wasn't looking at the porn, I promise. Uh, but I just happened to be an <laughs> ancillary character there, and I said, oh "God, what happens?" And I'm curious. So I looked up, and um, I was familiar with pornography. It glazed over a few times, and <laughs> uh, I had remembered uh, this girl named uh, Bianca Trump who was curvy and cute and, you know, she just stuck in my head. And I said, like, oh, Google Bianca Trump. And I found this long story of her basically having run-ins with the law, running an escort service, joining the Aryan Nation, getting kicked out of that because she had sex with black guys when she was in porn, then ending up in Washington State Correctional Center uh, for distribution of meth and kidnapping. So I was like, Jesus Christ, this is just the first story I looked up. How many more of these are here? So the next two years, I, uh, I gathered them up. I pitched it to a couple places. And it really, you know, nobody was like, oh, it's kind of porn, you know. Honestly, I got this cold, I got cold shoulder from a lot of people. And um, then I was, uh, I was uh, bartending at a place called The Third Stop, and a regular customer had come in uh, named Andy Weiss, who's our executive producer on here. We want to congratulate her twin boys today. Yes. <laughs> And um, so he's like, hey, man, I've got uh, this, uh, this little part in this little movie that we're doing. Uh, I'd like you to come and read for us. I said, cool. Well, you know, what's it about? And he's like, well, it's about um, uh, the porn business, the Russian mafia, and the Taliban. I said, oh, another one of those? <laughs> and uh, I said, cool. I said, you know, it's funny. I had this idea of this documentary, but you, know, you only do features and stuff. So he's like, I was like, no, what is it? I said, it's called Live After Porn. It happens to porn stars of daily business. And I love it. Let's do it. Six weeks later, I was in uh, Chris and Alex's office and uh, in the Variety Building on Wilshire completely intimidated by his lawyer and everybody else and uh, signed a contract and we got it. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. So tell us about bringing, um, you know, the, let's go with the crew together to work on it and then uh, about your reach out to the people who actually ended up being in it. Well, Andy um, has worked in a lot of uh, television and film and the first person he introduced me to was uh, Mike Labatt, my director of photography, who is my Obi-Wan, <laughs> uh, my Yoda. He was so patient with me because I'd only directed plays. Um, I was a theater major and I produced some shorts, but nothing really major and Michael was there for me and we got that together and I said you know uh, we had a lot of talk and I'm like you know we really should have a, a female presence here you know that somebody who's ex experienced in indie films and docs and stuff so you know I know this great uh, producer who's another regular customer at Third Stop named Susan Diner and we like Third Stop huh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I was that guy working at a bar you know I mean and uh, and Susan's like well let me take a look at it love it let's do it and then um, and we got we got to shooting. It was a very small crew. Uh, there was basically about four of us all the time. Our field editor Dave was in the audience, uh, assistant slash field editor was in the audience, and Dave got to scan all the naked pictures of guys. So he got to see a lot of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and then uh, we were you know we actually ended up meeting somebody else, and because um, it's you know creative people butt heads, and I'm a very passionate person, and. Um, Susan and I butted ahead at times where we were going to go, and we needed times to, and so Andy said, you know what, i got a great guy, he's worked at some theater as well, so you guys have a lot to talk about in New York, and brought in Michael Tips. And Michael um, uh, basically, you know, kept me excited. Those of you that know me know that I can be just a quivering mess and completely unsure of myself, even though I have a few drinks down me, and I'm like, you know, I don't, well, anyhow. <laughs> and um, then Mike and I stayed on together quite a bit, and... Um, we went through many, many, many different versions of this. I mean, you, you probably saw the 16th different cut. You know, we looked, you know, well, maybe television, maybe film. You know, what, we always wanted to do a film, but we had people that were interested. And here's a note for all you young filmmakers that are out there, uh, like the rest of us. Try to go with your vision as, as hard as you can, because 
like we eventually just came back to exactly what we went, uh, went, wanted to go to. And Pastor, a lot of money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a lot of money. Oh, jeez. Uh, not a mind, thank God. Um, and then, uh, and uh, then Will uh, came on, and we just had this, you know, wonderful conversation, and um, it just kind of unfolded. And uh, there we went. Well, what about what about how did you choose the different stories? Because I'm sure you researched a lot more that didn't make it in, and maybe even interviewed a lot of people who didn't make it in. So how did you a what were you looking for in the stories, and then how did you choose the final ones that were there? Um, what happened was I had had a folder about that thick of hand notes and emails and stories on the internet and old magazines that I had dug up. I found this one old magazine in this little bookstore on, um, on, on uh, Franklin next to La Poubelle. And I was like, oh my god, and there was a, a thing of a girl who didn't make it. But I kept finding all these things and uh, the first girl that I had got in touch with was Bianca Trump. And I found that by finding her parole officer. And uh, she ended up canceling on us three days in advance because she said that um, you know what? People hated me uh, because she was with the, the Aryan Nation and all the stuff like that, and nobody recognizes me anymore, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Mm. And I was, it, it sucked because you know she was the one that I had been focused on all these years, but I got it at the same time. Everybody else was, I mean, God, I found one girl's address. She, she produced her own movie, and I found the address on the back of the box cover, kind of like Mary Carey found her little Cinemax movie. And then uh, there was, when MySpace, people used MySpace, a few people actually used MySpace. And then we actually got a little help from uh, Paul Fishbein at AVN, Adult Media News. He's really, really sweet to us, and especially some of the uh, older characters in there that he knew really well, and he reached out for us. And then I looked up people in the phone book and like, just went down and just searched and searched and searched. I mean, you just dig and you dig and you dig, and you never know who's going to find whom. And like with Luke, it was really interesting. Luke had, had left writing for the business, and I had emailed, but somebody had bought his web domain. And the girl who ran that website put me in touch with him with that. And uh, Nina, uh, we were filming up in San Francisco in, in Mill Valley, and we were John Leslie and Richie Pacheco. And Sh Shelly Lubin was trying to pull girls out of porn at this like sex convention type thing. And Nina was there promoting herself, uh, <laughs> half naked in the whole nine yards. So, and, but she was really good friends with Richie Pacheco and John Leslie. And uh, we walked up, we were like, hey, uh, we're friends with uh, with uh, with Rick Fisher. She's like, Howie, I love Howie, blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked for a few minutes, and then met her back in LA and did a wonderful interview with her. So it's a it's a, it's really interesting how we just found everybody. But once we really started talking to the right people, uh, it's a very tight knit family there. Um, even though a lot of people disagree with each other in that business, it's very much like Hollywood, but you know, with pictures of sex and stuff. And they once we were with a few people. Especially, uh, Bill helped out a lot because he, he's got a lot of friends. Um, John Leslie was, is still very well respected in the business, and uh, Cindy Loftus, who runs Luke's old site, a lot of people know her. Once we started getting together with those people, we, I started getting emails and phone calls from people, hey, give me a call, I'll see if I can help you out. Because a lot of people exploit that business. I mean, I mean, it seems kind of redundant to say a business that's full of exploitation, people are exploited still, but they really do, and they're looking to do an expose, everything like that. and. The way that I wanted to do this, and everybody, want, everybody wanted to do this, was we wanted to give them a fair shake. And you know what? Like, I'm not the Michael Moore type of guy who's going to try to cut things and make things and make somebody look bad. If you're going to hang yourself, you're going to hang yourself with your own damn words. And so what, I think we got a pretty... Yeah, that, that's thing. one of the things that I really did like about it because, you know, we do get a lot of entries that are actually... Our very first year, we were, appro we were approaching um, people to be on our board of directors, and when we said we were going to do the festival without stars, they were like, do you mean porn? And it was like, <laughs> no, no, we really don't. But, um, yeah, people have a very, you know, strange perception sometimes of different things. Let me find out from everybody sure. here, though, a little bit about, you know, your involvement and, and uh, maybe a little bit about yeah. what, your, what your part was. Well, when Andy brought me on, it wasn't just for, um, for policing. It was uh, for field producing and uh, more, creative, more creative vision. And I think, I think what attracted all of us to the project, uh, not, to, not to speak for everybody, but just that uh, I think it's really interesting. I mean, that's as much, as much as I can say. I think that it's interesting because we, one of the comments that Bill made about, you know, society, you know, blighting those that he jacked off to is pretty insightful. Because mm -hmm. I think that everyone has their demons and everyone's ashamed of them. And I think that on some level, you know, I think Nina actually said in one of the interviews, I'm not sure if we use it or not, that the media doesn't really come after Nina because she's not a target. 
She is unbelievably educated, beautiful, amazing, experienced, and why would